Um, I need to take a few hours off work. I was hoping you could handle morning surgery. I don't know. It's really important. Where are you going? It's a personal matter, but I'll be local so I can take any emergencies. How long are you going to be? Uh, well, I don't know yet, but I'm sure you'll cope. Um, it's just a couple of flea injections and... Mrs Walton's lovebirds. Mrs Walton... Oh, no, I can't stand her. She bores for England. Well, so how do we found a buddy solicitor who'll grant them a quickie divorce? Put us all out of our misery. Very funny. How are you feeling today? I was just saying, I just thought it'd be better if I keep myself busy. I've got the splits up. I was just going to do that. I'm quite capable of running this bar on my own, you know. I managed it for several years before you even arrived in this village. Yeah, I know that, Alan. I think it's better that I handle this shift on my own. Whatever you say. I suppose you think I was being hard on her. No, you're just hurting, and I know what that feels like. I remember when I became licensee here, I was so proud. Well, the Woolpack's the, the hub of village life, and as mine host, I was right at the centre of it all. I suppose that seems pretty stupid to you. Not at all. We all want to belong somewhere. Well, that's just it, Nicola. I don't belong anymore. I've overstayed my welcome. Nonsense. As long as Benice is running this pub, there'll always be a place for you here. There's what? A sad old man sitting at the bar remembering how things used to be. Or one of the landlady's cast-offs. I think I'm worth a bit more than that. Look, I'm sorry about yesterday. I, I was just upset about you not turning up. Maybe I... Maybe I said some things that I shouldn't. So we just forget about it? Well, that's what I want to do. Chris is going to be gone all day. It means we can spend some time together. Start again. What and all? I thought you were with Chris and Harrogate. Well, I dropped him off. No, I don't need collecting till tonight. So I thought I'd see what needs doing here. Oh, that's good of you, Terry. Well, why don't you take a few hours off? I'm sure you deserve a break. No. Cheers, Zoe. Charity, have you confirmed that feed order? It's on my list of things to do this morning. It should all have been done last week. Then I suggest you do it. Trout and I've got some paperwork to be getting on with. Whatever you say, Zoe. Zoe, I wish you wouldn't do that. People are going to start noticing if I don't do any work. I doubt it. As far as they're concerned, you're just the boss's woman. And they're certainly not going to question me. I don't think we've got anything to worry about. But it doesn't look as if we're going to get any peace here with all the interruptions. Why don't we go to your place? At least we won't be disturbed there. Can't seem to get a sniff of a job. Someone said Ernie Shuttleworth were doing a refurb on that malt shovel. Pub work? That should be worth a few bob. Whatever anybody quotes will undercut them. Can't bother, I've already tried. Mm, not interested. They're not even using builders. The big refurb doesn't amount to much more than sticking a few pictures on the wall and re-sweeping the sawdust on the floor. Well, at least you've got your bar work to earn you some money. We've got an out coming in. Mr Pollard's looking for workers. He's doing interviews today. No offence, Sam, but you got to be pretty desperate to work for Bollard. Everyone knows what a crook he is. He's always been dead good to me. I don't know. Uh, and beggars can't be choosers. It's only until you, you'd found something better. Oh, OK. I'll tell him you're coming. Are you sure about this? I haven't got any choice, have I? No part waiting around for the men in the family to pay the bills. Well, I just had a really lousy morning, thanks to Zoe, unloading all the work on me. Never easy working for the takes. Well, they're busy people. I remember when I ran home farm. Always something to be done. Maybe. But this wasn't business. She said she needed time off for personal reasons. Really? Oh, said she had to do some paperwork with charity. He's really upset, you know. It's not surprising. Now everyone seems to know about you and Jack. You made him look a fool. I didn't mean to. Well, I doubt if that's much consolation. At least I tried to be honest with him. Not cheat behind his back like you would have done. What? Whatever your motives were, I think you owe it up to him to try and patch things up. He's been a good friend to you, Diane. 
Where's Zoe? Uh, doing some paperwork with charity, I think. Is there a problem? I don't know till she's had a look at it. That mare's gone lame. She promised she'd give it a check over. I've been waiting for her all morning. Do you want me to chase her off? Yeah. Maybe you could remind her that it's not bits of paper that make this place run. It's horses and we're supposed to look after them. Hello, Zoe? No, I haven't forgotten. I've just been busy. Yes, I'll get there as soon as I can. I'll see you later. Who was that? Oh, Virginia. Andrew wants me to check over one of the stud horses. Maybe I'll get going then. Well, I don't think it's that urgent. And besides, I think it's more important that we talk. Miss so we can do that any time. You shouldn't be letting people down. You're not trying to avoid the subject, are you? No, of course I'm not. Well, I'm glad to hear it because us being happy is what matters, not some routine vet's appointment. I've already told you everything's fine between us. But I'd be a lot happier if we just both got on with our jobs, same as usual. You ought to go to the stud. <laughs> oh, no, Sam, that won't do. You said bring a chair. It needs to be lower. The candidate should always have to look up to the boss. That's basic interview psychology. What if the candidate's dead tall? Just get a lower chair, Sam. I can always sit on the floor while we're waiting. What are you doing here? I come for a job, didn't Sam tell you? Oh, it's not up to Sam, and you're not on our list. I don't have to be. Our family's got an agreement, Mr Pollard. If we need a job, he'll get us one. Well, I need to um, consider under these particular circumstances. You can well... consider all you like, but that's what you agreed with Marlon. Or do you want me to get Clarence Zach to remind you? Uh, no, uh, th th that won't be necessary. I'm sure you'll fit in splendidly. Going to join me for lunch? I wish. I'm still waiting for Zoe to turn up. Oh, she said she was coming. So was Christmas. I thought having a vet on the board was supposed to make things easier for us. Do you want me to call her again? Don't bother. I've already tried. She switched on mobile off. How's the horse doing? It's definitely getting worse. I think we'd better get Paddy out. Oh, he's probably at lunch as well. We'll try his mobile. The animals come first, or so Zoe always tells us. You can take it up with her. Whiskey for you, orange. Cheers. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. No, but, um, no, there's always supposed to be on call today. Yeah, all right then. All right, I'll be over straight away. Bye. Don't worry, bother getting up someday. See you later, lad. Everyone's making me feel guilty about it. But I've made my decision and I'm going to stick to it. I'm sure you and Jack can be happy together. So am I. Mind you, there are still a few hurdles to get over. Jack's devoted to the kids. He's going to want them to be happy with the idea. Well, no problem. They'll like you. Liking me as a visitor and accepting me as Jack's partner are two different things. I'm going up for tea later. Try and introduce Andy to the idea. Mm, good luck. Mm, wish you'd make things right with Alan, though. I hate seeing him like this. Maybe you should have an holiday. I'll run away, you mean? Go off and lick my wounds? No, well, it's just that things look better after a bit of sun. No, that's not the answer. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves. Okay. No, I've been thinking about how I got into this mess. I've come to the conclusion it was all my own fault. Oh, I think you've been a bit hard on yourself, Al. Well, am I? I, I proposed to Stella as well, do you remember? And how I could have thought either of them would want to spend the rest of their lives with me. Oh, don't ask me. I've never understood women. Well, perhaps I was just afraid of getting old alone. Aren't we all? Yeah, but why, Jerry? And the world seems to expect all of us to be part of a couple, even if we can't stand the sight of each other. I've got good friends. I, I enjoy their company. I can close the door on them when I choose. But you can't do that with a wife. No. Sounds like you made up your mind that you're going to stay single. Well, I've made up my mind about more than that. I'm going to move out of the wool pack. You can't. I mean, you're part of the fixtures. Not anymore. No, I, I should have done it when I sold up. Started thinking about the future rather than hanging on to the past. 
Now I'll move into the B&B and consider my options. What options? Well, I've just tried to explain, Terry. I've suddenly realised that I've now got the time and the money to do exactly what I want with my life. And the great thing about it is I've got nobody to please except myself. I thought we were going to be stood. Yeah, we are. Since I'm sure everything's all right between us. I've told you! Yes, maybe, but it feels different. Did anything happen while I was away? I don't know what you mean. It's just you and Chris seem closer since I've been back. Yeah, we've been getting on OK. He's been less possessive, and that's probably because I haven't had to lie to him about where I've been or who I've seen. Well, maybe you prefer it like that. Oh. Look, Chris has been good to me, right? I don't want to hurt him. I thought you felt the same way. I mean, he is your brother. Depends where it leaves you and me. Look, nothing has changed. That's why I was angry when you didn't show. Who oh, does start going on about that again? Yeah, you're right. We're together now, that's what matters. Flipping heck have you been? Working! Well, you shouldn't have switched your mobile off, should you? You're supposed to be on call! I'm sorry, I forgot to recharge it. Yeah, well, I've missed out on my lunch now because I've got to do your call up at the stud. Well, I'll do your surgery tomorrow. Yeah, well, that'd be a start. I'm already doing my clients as well as yours. It's too much. He was really angry. He'll get over it. What, well, do you think he suspected what was going on? Does it matter? Well, it matters to me. Zoe, my life's complicated enough already. Oh, just leave it all to me, Charity. I'll handle it. <sighs> do you reckon? I hear you're <laughs> celebrating. Oh, just a bit. I've got a new job. Oh, congratulations. Then perhaps I could interest you in this excellent sancerre. Well, we're just going to have a beer. And on what Pollard's going to pay me, I don't think I could even afford that. I mean, it's just a temporary job, like, you know, until building work starts up again. Well, this is one of the wines we're thinking of introducing, so... Have this on me. Let's call it an introductory offer. What's that very much? <laughs> yeah, you're a gent. <laughs> oh, no, Marlon's going to give us our traditional family discount. Look, you bring him in here, today of all days. Oh, who pulled your chair? It's Trisha's birthday. And we'd be celebrating it together if it wasn't for your meddling. Here we are, something wrong. It's all right, I'll deal with this. I don't think Marlon's ever going to get over Trisha leaving. Marlon, we're short on customers, so it makes sense to be polite to the few we've got. Not Jason, not today. She'd still be here if it wasn't for him. If you're looking for someone to blame, then you might try me. I had a row with Trisha before she left. I practically accused her of causing Bernice's miscarriage. God, yeah. We all say things in the heat of the moment we regret later, Marlon. Maybe you wish you could take back some of the things you said to her. The trouble is, we don't often get a second chance. It's tough, but that's life. you just got to move on. Just keep an eye on her for the next 24 hours. Well, you shouldn't have any more trouble. Just as well, considering how long it takes to get a vet out here. Came as soon as you called. I've been waiting for Zoe all morning. After all, she's the senior partner. She's the one supposed to be looking after her horses. I, I am perfectly well qualified to do it. I know, I know. But as a director of the company, you'd think she'd take more on interest. I don't know what's wrong with her lately. You better ask her, then. Ah, well, perhaps we should cast our net wider. Advertise in the dailies, huh? Adverts cost money. We might get a better class of candidate, though. Today's batch seemed like the flotsam and jetsam washed up on a nice beach. Well, we're not going to get many graduates applying. Not on the money we're paying. Duggett, Cynthia, 
I I've come for my interview. Uh, interview's finished half an hour ago. And since we stressed punctuality, you don't seem very suitable. It's not my fault. Bus will let. Well, I'm sorry you've had a wasted journey. So you've filled out vacancies, then? Um, not quite. Well, then you'd be daft not to see me. And all it'll cost you is a few minutes of your time, and you will end up with the best worker you're going to get. Andy? Can you name ten national parks? Why? It's for our geography coursework. Oh, look, you can do that later. I wanted to talk to you about Diane. It's got to be here next week. Do you like her? Diane, yeah. You obviously like her a lot. Yeah. She's uh, she's coming over for tea. Great. Right, I've got four. Can you think of any more? Andy, I wanted to talk to you about Diane. I'll get in trouble if I don't finish it. I'm not too early, am I? No, of course not. Come in. Do you know anything about national parks? Andy? It's OK. I don't mind. We've got to write a bit about each of them. Well, I expect Jack's told you all about the Dales National Park. <sighs> As if. But my favourite's Snowdonia. I could tell you quite a bit about that. Nice one. Pull up a chair. You're just what I need. Well, I must say you seem more like the candidate we're looking for. Oh, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. But uh, I'm afraid to say the wages aren't at all what I were expecting. I'm sure you could stretch to another tenner a week for someone of my calibre. Certainly not. The offer's there. Take it or leave it. Oh, I'll need time to think about it. You've got ten seconds. All right, I'll take it. Pleasure doing business with you. Well, that went very well. She'll need watching that one. You'd better leave it to me. Yes, what have you said, Laurier? <laughs> Certainly showed your mettle. <laughs> This is delicious, Jack. Better than he usually manages, mind you. You're rubbish at cooking. <laughs> Andy! It's OK. If we're all going to get on together, we might as well start by being honest with each other. I can't argue with that. As soon as he has told you about the barn. Yeah, well, I thought she had a right to know. Don't worry, Andy. Your secret's safe with me. Anyway, we ought to be trying to forget all that. Tonight's supposed to be about the future, not the past. Suits me. However me and Jack feel, we know our relationship's bound to affect you and Robert and Victoria, so we thought we'd give you the chance to have your say. Well, I can't speak for them, but it's fine by me. Might even have its upside. You could drag him up to the 21st century. He's dead old-fashioned. What do you mean? Um, look, thank you for bailing me out today. I'm... Um... Sorry about the inconvenience. It was embarrassing. The stud is supposed to be one of our most important clients. We shouldn't really treat them like that. Yes, it won't happen again. Well, not. It seems to me your mind hasn't been on your work for a while. But you have apologised. That ought to be enough. Not as far as the business is concerned. I'm supposed to be a partner, remember? I think you're overreacting. There was no harm done. Well, not yet, but there will be if you keep on like this. Paddy, you may be a partner but you're a junior partner. It's still my practice and I will not be lectured about it. Well, that's the big difference between you and me then, isn't it? You've got enough money to last you the rest of your life, no matter what happens to the vets, but I can't afford that luxury, so I can't stand by and watch you doing this. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about what would have happened if Chris had found you in charity and not me. I really need to talk to you. I'll talk away. You don't mind if I get on with this, do you? Of course not. I never meant to hurt you, Alan. Yeah, I do know that. Now, it's amazing the amount of junk one accumulates in a lifetime. There are several more cases I've said. It was a difficult decision for me to make, but in the end, I think it was best for all of us. That's quite so. Oh, I remember this. This was presented to me by the LVA after my lecture on fine wines. Do they have a place in country pubs? Must have been fascinating. On reflection, a bit pretentious, I think. Oh, jumble. What are you doing, Alan? Well, I, I don't want to take too much junk with me when I move. So I, I'm going through everything, and uh, anything I don't need, I'll give to Ashley for the next jumble sale. Move? Where are you going? Not far. Just the B&B. Uh, someone might want the frame. I don't want to 
feel as if I've driven you out of your home. I think as if as a positive rather than a negative. I, and you've made a decision on where your future happiness lies, and it's prompted me to do the same. It doesn't feel like that. Well, it does to me. I think it would be better for both of us if we consign our relationship to the jumble, don't you? Are you going to tell him? What? Like the blue touch paper and stand back? It might be better to bring it into the open. For you, maybe. I imagine you'll use your money to take you and Charity as far away from the explosion as possible. Maybe. Then what about the rest of us? I don't see it as anyone else's business. Don't be naive, Zoe. It takes on most things round here. If Chris finds out what's been going on behind his back, it'll probably bring the old place down. I think you're exaggerating. Am I? He's got enough influence and he's certainly spiteful enough to try and put the vets out of business. If you don't care about that, does it... Does it not worry you that you're betraying your own brother? Not after what he's done to me all these years. He deserves it. Oh, I see. So this is vengeance, then, is it? I didn't say that. I just think you're playing a very dangerous game and I'm asking you to think about who's going to get hurt. I'm not giving charity up. Not for Chris. Not for you. Not for anyone. Yeah.